Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to Mary, Cedric, Carlos, Thomas, and Ian about Reno 911. It's a wonderful heist premiering on Comedy Central December 3rd. Thank you all for your time. You're welcome. Great sweater. Thank you. you. Great I have energy, to, right? Festive movie, hopefully festive interview. I mean, so much fun. I mean, Reno 911 is always a lot of fun and it's so great. So thank you, first of all, for everyone for giving us this for many years. I really, really appreciate it. Thomas, I'm going to start with you, but everyone else, I want to chime in. You know, I'm watching this movie and I look at, you know, especially the scenes at the mall with Santa Chimp and everything. Mm-hmm. When does it start feeling like just like, friend just having fun and when it like not work basically is it early on is it like after doing the table reads like when does it start just feeling like wow it's not work we're just having a good time craziness you know, is it early on that's fascinating and i don't I, I i know that you told the other people to chime in but i'd really love it if they fucking did not um <laughs> wow tom uh, you gotta keep these thoughts to yourself <laughs> i know but i think as much as we goof around it it always still feels pretty much like work doesn't it guys i mean no like, I, not for me I think it feels like work. you guys no. have all the responsibility no, like, like it, we ask that question honestly when does it oh, not it, feel like not work is when the oh. phone rings and i find out we're gonna do it i'm like holy shit it's like a miracle i get paid for just going and fucking around i love it mm-hmm. it's it, absolutely it my favorite uniform, job if it weren't for the uniforms mm-hmm. it wouldn't ever feel like work to me right but those uniforms uh, <sighs> But the even mo- that's as good as it gets because normally yeah. you have all those bullshit costume fittings. And I love it's just like put on that same uniform. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we're well, really you're the also best. You're, you're working kind of as actors and storytellers, but you're also like pretending to work as officers too, right? So it's like it's both. Layered. If you think about it. <laughs> and there have sure, been what? times where I was in costume and was asked to help somebody in trouble. As a police officer. Oh gosh! Was in that the in days, Miami? When we, filmed, when we filmed in Carson, uh, Sergeant Alvarez uh, was like, uh, "You don't want to walk around in that uh, cop uniform back to your trailer here in uh, Carson, California." So we had to be careful. <laughs> I, I yeah. would say there was, there was one time on the new movie, "It's a Wonderful Heist" on Comedy Central, December third at eight p.m. Just plugging that. Absolutely. Um, that uh, felt like work, which is I was doing a scene. I'm often doing something like this where I was just I'm in a jock strap hiding in a bouncy house waiting around <laughs> so i was sitting i'm like i was in a little pod in just a jock strap and a headband Dumbbells. waiting 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 for the other characters to find me in the bouncy house <laughs> and that that feels a little bit like work yeah yeah absolutely no yeah. i and you know what i mean that was a perfect example because the, the the seeing everyone like at the mall with like the santa chip and just a quick back and forth that's like my favorite thing about Reno 911. So now I have specific questions. So Cedric, I want to know because you know it's it's been quite some time with you and this character specifically. Have you kind of gone to grasp with this character, or just like every time there's a new Reno 911 project, you know, you're learning something new or you're trying new things? Like I feel like there's always crazy things thrown to all these characters, but I'm just curious specifically. You play this character for quite some time now. Are you like familiar with this character? Would you say? I'm familiar, but definite surprises happen. Yeah. Uh, I didn't realize that I had a relationship with uh, uh, that I dated Dangle's mother at one point. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we, uh, we often surprise each other with details about the other character that they did not know yet. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but that's the rule of improv it's yes and. Mm-hmm. Yes, I had a relationship with Dango's mother, and it was wonderful. <laughs> is, is what I say when that <laughs> gift is given to me. Um, yes, uh, so yeah, there are plenty of surprises. That's also, I think, what is the beauty of the show because we, as, as improvisers on the show, we're you know we we're it's, we're finding out things, and for the audience, I think they also feel that. Those surprises are are for them as well. Um, that 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 real like wait what just happened? Yeah. <laughs> to us and you at the at the same time. 
Absolutely. Mary, this is a question for you. And I, I bet that Thomas is going to chime in on this one. But, uh, <laughs> you know, this is the third Reno 911 film. And I'm it, right. Is this technically the third one? Technically was Miami That's the right. first, That's right? right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I said that and you were like, wait a second. I was like, I messed it up right away. Sorry, guys. It's so yeah. <laughs> hard because there are so many. I can't remember. It's really hard. Once you like after the first one, because at the end of the day, you know, you're working on a lot of different projects. You know, it's business at the end of the day as well. I started about the whole thing, working with friends, but it's a business. Does Is there kind of this kind of, wow, like I hope we could do more and more movies specifically? Like, or does the mindset kind of change a little bit compared to the show or the movie? Or is it all kind of the same in, in that regards? They're very similar yeah. as far as like the acting part, but... I like the movies because it kind of feels like you're at summer camp. You get into, in one time we were literally in a, like a, we had to uh, shoot it in a COVID bubble. Yeah. Uh, so we were just in this huge like hotel complex running mm -hmm. around screaming like kids whose parents weren't home. <laughs> uh, but as far as like what I want us, you know, I want us to do every genre. I want us to do a screwball comedy. I want us to do a musical. I want us to do a swashbuckling pirate adventure. I want us to do a Western. I want this us to be do VR games, by the way. <laughs> animated special. I think we should appear on South Park. I think there's no limit to uh, what these characters can do. Cedric and I want to play the Harlem Globetrotters. There you go. I guess the Reno Sheriff's Department. I think, have any of you done interviews in your characters yet? Has yes. that ever, that oh, has sure. happened, right? We actually, someone reminded me, and I, I, I'll i be honest, I, I forgot that we did this. We've done lots of those. But the, the one thing that we also did is on one of our DVDs, maybe it's the movie, mm -hmm. you can listen to the commentary by the characters yeah. on mm -hmm. the movie. Uh, it might be on the DVD of Reno 911 Miami, I think. Yeah, we obviously did uh, the red carpet in characters for that movie. Yeah, we crashed. We also really crashed cars in front of Man's Chinese Theater. I, yeah, like like I said, like I would have a lot of fun doing that, like interviewing people in character, but I feel like that that might not be everyone's cup of tea. Because... <laughs> and some of them are really not fun. Oh, Go ahead, ask your, quitter, sweater, uh, nice. ask your question, Sweater Man. Oh, I just, I, I set myself up for that one. Yeah. Oh, he's really doing it. What is that? okay? So what? Okay, sir, I would like, like to ask you a question. Like I would like to ask you, with you. I would like to ask you a question, sir. Yeah. Um. You know, you often, you know, are part of a like, you know, there's there's crimes all the time of year. Yeah. What do you consider a Christmas present crime, specifically? Well, because I don't know. I've always liked socks, so I don't know. I don't think that's a crime because there's some well, cool socks. That sweater could be uh, considered a crime in Carson, but. Uh, well, fentanyl is going around. People are passing out for Halloween, as you know. So uh, and that's just winding its way into Christmas. And so we're going to be on the lookout for fentanyl uh, candies, stars, ornaments, things like that. Uh, that is definitely a crime of Christmas present. And we'd mm -hmm. like to eradicate that so that the uh, ghost of uh, the Christmas, of Christmas future does not uh, get a hold of it. <laughs> So it's, the short version is it's harder than it looks. It's it's than it looks. Well, can anyone? That was very impressive. That that sunglasses flip. I didn't even. <laughs> that was and really really. Does Chris have sunglasses in his recording booth? Is my other cameos? Question. You have you every. It. He's, he's prepared for like a thousand different scenarios. And I've got a thermos lid. Bottom. I've got a thermos lid right here, Michael. Uh, like like Harry Cop's show where he's just got a huge box in front of him that stuff's going to come out of. I Has do now you? have a question for Carlos, actually. Yes. If that, if that. So, you know, like a lot of your amazing, you know, um, call, work colleagues, you know, a lot of you have worked in voice acting as well. Yeah. And, you know, um, is that all storytelling or is it kind of mindset change a little bit? I mean, you know, you don't have to be kind of present. You're in a studio doing, you know, Rocco's Modern Life and Fairly Odd Parents and everything. But do you see it as storytelling or do you separate like, you know, live action and animated? Like, I'm curious about that. No, it's all storytelling. And yeah. I, I'm on a new show with both Tom and Cedric coming up for yeah. Nickelodeon. And no, uh, Billy West had said it best, best um, that it's all theater of the mind. And Reno, like Mary said, once you put on that uniform, Mm -hmm. we 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 know where to go with this story we we know where to go with these characters and the same is said for animation you you come to learn your characters and yeah you're you're telling a story you're weaving this little tale for for people to watch and and be entertained so i think there's uh 
real similarities between Reno and, and voiceover. I think it's both the same. You know, what's really funny. And I have to say this very quickly to Carlos, because I what one time I just scared some of my friends were watching a horror movie. And right before a jump scare, I actually, I kid you not, put kind of the sound bite of Crocker going, parents and it's going to crap out of them. <laughs> <laughs> and it was it was amazing and ian here my question for you too is specifically like you know writing producing acting going on camera going behind the camera is there a time where you're thinking like at one point i'm gonna do both like i'm gonna go behind the camera or on the camera like premeditated wise or does it kind of just happen would you say do both yeah well like you know there's people write and they and they act and everything like did it just kind of happen that you would like act and write like, or like, do you think like, okay, I want to one day act and I want to also write. I get driven out from one to the next. (laughs) No one wants to hire me for the one. So then I move on. Then they don't like me there. So I move on again. You're like a drifter. You just got to restart every town. town. I I, I go fool the next people until they, they, (laughs) they just, they discover that. Oh, good. Is he always that angry? Yeah, we call that we call that the David Banner. You know, he just moves yeah. on. <laughs> well, no, because yeah. I do I do find it interesting, like for myself, you know, doing podcasting, I do some writing, I do, you know, some things as well. It kind of just all happens. Like I don't think I woke up in the morning and said, I'm gonna do all these different things or just focus on one. No, Maybe it is kind of like that. I, yeah. I actually have a it was an interview years ago. I did one movie isolated from everything else I did. We the first thing I ever wrote with uh, mm-hmm. Matt Walsh and my wife got made. And in some interview, I said, he said, do you see yourself writing the future? I said, no, nah, I don't think so. That's too hard. <laughs> and then most of my career has been writing. <laughs> so. Cut to. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I'm really excited for everyone to see this film. Thomas, you know, amazing cast. You know, there's a lot of people that kind of show up, pop up. And you're like, oh, my goodness. Like, who else is going to kind of show up and everything? Is that kind mindset a little bit too where you know we're gonna see a lot of characters and a lot of different things but when you're making these films you want to have those surprises in there right because you know it's yeah it's another reno 911 film but it's cool to kind of think of all these surprises that we have in this film as well right there's some really amazing ones but i mean uh, without spoiling because the trailer exists i think it's it's okay to say like michael ian black has an amazing role in the film Mm -hmm. uh obviously all of your main deputies you know jim jeffries makes an appearance in the mm-hmm. movie which i love because i'm a huge jim jeffries fan mm-hmm. and it was super fun to improvise with him um and then obviously nick swartzen yep. is back as terry you know probably one of the most beloved uh reno characters but terry's been on the show so many times and he's a very good evidence that we don't always remember what we did and on the show because Terry's character has two last names. <laughs> oh, wow. In, in one episode, he's Terry Jaspermans. Mm-hmm. And then in a different episode, he's Terry Bernadino. Yeah. So it's just, <laughs> wow. it shows you how we're not paying attention to detail <laughs> that much. We got no, the Terry I... part, right? <laughs> well, you know, uh, the, the Hulk is David Bruce Banner because they screwed up. Yep. Stan Lee forgot he was, I think, Bruce Banner and called him David Banner, and they had to make oh, sense David of it. David Banner is all over this interview. What's oh, wow. <laughs> You guys <laughs> copied me all along, did you? Huh? Oh, was that Stan Lee? Yeah, Stan Lee. I, it's a, my crack at Stan Lee. Absolutely. Oh my we're, pastilles. We're gonna we're gonna wrap up. I wanted to thank you all so much for coming on Pop Turtle the chat about Reno 911. It's a wonderful high. So it was really great chatting with you all. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good thank you. December 3rd on, on Comedy Central. Thanks. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.